Welcome back to another hand sealer video where I talk about all things to do with being a graphic design freelancer and running my own business. Today I'm going to show you my file management system that I use as a freelance graphic designer for all of my client files. How I name files, how I store files, what files I give to my clients and all that jazz. First things first, how to name files. We've all been there, we've all done it, where we name our files final, finished, version 6, whip 3, almost complete, final, final, doc, dot, maybe finished. <laughs> Guys, we cannot live like this. It's not good business practice at all. And if you're serious about your business, you must take pride in it all the way down to the file naming. Also, you don't want to be giving your clients messy files like that that are super long and they don't even know what they're looking at. So this is what I do for my own file naming system for my clients. And I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way to do it so that you don't end up having lost files or really long, weird names. So I'm going to swap you over to my desktop now and then we can look at these together. Okay, so we are currently recording. So when I first onboard a client, they've accepted the quote, they've signed the contract, you know, they've gone through the whole shebang. I then create a folder on my desktop. Well, technically I have this in a client folder. I currently just put everything in my desktop <laughs> in a folder called desktop, just so you can't see what's on my desktop because there's a lot of folders. But in my client folder, I like to create a new folder. I will name it the name of the client. So let's just say client name or let's do it like this so client name so we've got the name of the client that I'm working with then inside there I create a bunch of different folders so first one would be legal so the legal folder is for anything to do with legal things so the quote that they've approved the invoice their contract that's been signed so anything to do with legal that goes in there then I create another folder called supplied. In the supplied folder, anything that the client has supplied me with, any reference images, any particular things that they want included, that goes in the supplied folder. Next up, I have design. Design folder is obviously for all my designs, so that's usually Illustrator, Photoshop or InDesign files. Then I create a folder for links. So any links or images or pictures or anything that I export out for presentations, that goes in the links. Then I create one called presentation. Oopsie, I did a typo. So with presentation, it's in the name. The presentations go in there. The next folder is fonts. So any fonts that I use that will be handed over to client go in the fonts folder and any font licenses if I've had to buy a font. I then create one called mood board. So any mood board reference images go in the mood board folder. And then I have a final eighth folder called handover. So in the handover, it's basically all the final files that I handed over to the client. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight folders. So that is how I organize my life. <laughs> okay, so, so those are the folders. Now the next thing that I'm going to show you is how I actually name each individual file. When I first start, the absolute first file that I ever use for the client, anything to do with that will be named like this. So just to show you guys, I've downloaded a free stock image from Unsplash and we're going to rename this file and pretend that it's something for my client. So this is what I'll do. Pretend that this is a logo. I will say client name underscore logo underscore V1. If it's a pattern, it would be instead of client name logo, it would be client name pattern. If it's a business card, it would be B card V1. Okay. Then if it goes to client and it comes back after the presentation and there is a revision to do, it then becomes V2 and then V3, V4, V5. So this way I can keep track of the different versions that I've created. Sometimes I used to use um, WIP, so work in progress one, work in progress two. And then when it used to come back from client, then it would change to version one, version two, like revisions. But just for simplicity, I've kept it all V1, V2, V3, up to V, 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 whatever the revision number is or how many times I've worked on that file. And then once all the revisions are done, once everything is finished and final and the client has signed it off, I then change it to underscore fin. 
So it no longer becomes a version one, version two, version three. It says fin. Fin stands for finished, as in finished art. In an agency setting, finished art is usually the final stage in the design process before it goes off to client or goes live or gets printed or whatever or wherever the design is going. So that's what fin means. It also could mean final, so whichever you prefer. So when I go into the handover file, I will then again have a bunch of folders. So I will have the logo, the pattern, the business card, the shopping bag, the thank you card, whatever the, the asset is. And then inside there, I will have all the files that are sent, but only the finished files will go. The finished Illustrator file, the finished PDF, the finished JPEG, the finished PNG, whatever it is, the finished ones will always go. Client will never receive any of my work in progress or version files. Okay, so now we have our folders, we have our file names, now what? Next thing I wanna chat about is backing up your files. I store all of my freelance client files on a backup external SSD. And then when I'm done with the project, I delete them off my local machine and then they all live on an external SSD. Because you don't wanna clutter your machine with a bunch of files because these files get really, really, really big and it's gonna slow your machine down. So always, as soon as you come with the project, you move it, export it off and then delete from your main machine. Everything gets transferred to the SSD. I use the Samsung T7 SSD. It's a two terabyte one. I've never had any issues with it. It's super, super fast because it's an SSD. It also uses the new USB port. So it goes into my MacBook Pro beautifully and I don't have to use any sort of adapter. So this is great. It's fast, it's reliable, it works. This is not sponsored. Now let's talk about the files that I give to my clients. It really depends on the project and what the brief is. Let's say it's a brand identity project that I'm working on. For the logo, I will always give a JPEG, a PNG, a PDF, an SVG, and my native working Illustrator file, so the AR. I'm not gonna go into what all of these different files mean. I could probably make a video on this and explain like in detail, in depth, what each file means, what it's used for, where it can and can't be used and whatnot. So maybe keep a lookout for that video, but I'm not gonna go into that detail today. If I was doing a brand pattern, I would give them the JPEG, the PDF, the PNG, and the AR native working file. For a business card, a shopping bag, a thank you card, a t-shirt, anything that's going to go to print or be used at a print house, I supply a PDF X1A file with all the printer's marks already listed on the PDF. So that will be the trim marks, the bleed marks, um, color bars, any necessary information is saved on a PDF X1A. I also send my AI native working file and I make sure that every element has been expanded and in my swatches I've deleted all the unused color swatches. I also always give the fonts even if they're like free really accessible fonts that you can even just find on your machine I always give them the fonts and if it is a paid font I always include the font license. I also always create a brand identity guideline or a brand guide depending on the size of the project this could be a one page design or it could be a full on booklet like a presentation vibe. A brand guide is basically like the rule book for a brand. It'll have the logo in black and white and grayscale and full color. It'll state how to use the logo, when to use it, when not to use it. It'll say what color it can and can't be in, what backgrounds it should and shouldn't go on. The brand guide also has all the colors, all the color codes. If they've asked for Pantone colors, then you've got the Pantone numbers, the hex codes, if you want CMRK, RGB, whatever it is. It has all the brand assets, so patterns, how they should and shouldn't be used, any logo marks, submarks, how they should and shouldn't be used, social media examples, if they've requested that. I also include the fonts, so primary fonts, secondary fonts, what pairs with what. Depending on the size of the project, we also go down into sizes of fonts. So heading one, heading two, heading three, body copy one, body copy two, supporting copy, button copies, sizes, all of that. So that goes in there depending on the project. Some clients, I also include the photography styles. So down to the look and the feel and the vibe and the lighting and the colors and how they should and shouldn't edit it and all of that stuff. So that can also go in the brand guide. The brand guide is basically a rule book for the whole brand. And if the client goes to a website designer or goes to another graphic designer, they can basically take this brand guideline book to them and that designer can pick it up exactly where I left off and they can follow through the rest of the brand and make it look beautiful and it, it'll be like the designer never changed. This is basically to maintain consistency throughout your brand at all times so it's very important to have a brand guideline booklet because it literally it's like the holy grail it's the heart of your brand. So that is always included in my brand identity projects. If it's a smaller project, it's usually just like a one page document. If it's a larger 
project that I've been working on, then it becomes a multi-page document. Now I think that I've covered all the bases here. Not everyone works how I work. Every single designer is different, so everyone will name their files differently, will store their files differently, will back up their files differently, will supply different files to clients. But this is my process and what I do. And if you plan on being serious about your graphic design business, making small changes like your file management and your naming can really help take your business to the next level and help you stay organized, stay on top of things and keep your stress to a minimum. As we all know, freelance can be very stressful and just having something like this organized can help bring your stress down quite a lot. If you enjoyed this video, please show some love with a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions for me, drop it in the comments or if you have any potential video ideas or something that you wanna see me make a video about, also let me know. Have a great day wherever you are in the world and I'll see you soon, bye.